Now let's move on to our 3D liquid simulation. So we are going to go to our content drawer here. We are going to right click and we are going to do a Niagara system. But this time we are going to use our 3D flip. So we are going to start with our 3D grid flip hose here. Last we have seen that how the 2D hose work. Now we will see how the 3D hose will work. So we are going to click on this and we are going to click on create here. And now as soon as I do that, it will take a second to compile here. And now if I drag and drop it here, you can see we are getting this stuff here. And you can see we are not getting foam or anything like that. So we are going to do that also in a while. So let's just double click it here. And now if I extend it to here and if I scroll inwards, you can see we are having this grady flip fluid. And if you remember from our 2D, we are getting the same settings here. So if I increase our collision velocity multiplier to 3 and if I save it here and if I go again here, you can see we are emitting much more particles into our scene and due to that, our pool is basically shaking here because we are emitting much more particles into our scene. So let's just increase our resolution. So if you remember, you can increase your resolution from number cells max size, max axis, sorry max axis. So let's just take it to 256 here. And if I press enter, if I compile and save it, don't worry about this error, it will come. So you don't need to fix this. And if I go here, now you can see we are getting this error here. So what do you need to do? You need to basically reduce this samples here. So if again I go to in my system and if I take it to 128 and press enter and now you can see it's again back to default. So you need to play with this value. Sometimes it depends totally on your GPU. I am having a 16 GB of 4070 Ti Super. So it's handling really smooth. But if you are having a 6 GB or 8 GB low GPU, it is going to get stuck here because Niagara liquid systems are still in beta and they are still very unstable. So let's just take it to 200 and let's just see how this is looking. Okay, this is working but not that great and now you can see my scene is lagging a bit. Okay, so let's just take it back to where it was. Let's just take it to 128 here and now you can see it's working perfectly. Okay, next just scroll downwards and you need to increase the pressure iterations here if you are using, if you are increasing your number cell max axis. So let's just take it to 250 here. Okay, and let's just see here and now you can see this is looking really good. You can see we are emitting particles, we are emitting liquid from that particles. So let's just do one thing, let's just increase, decrease our water height. So let's just take it to 100 here. And now you can see our water height is small. So let me just take it out here and let me show you from here only. Okay. So let's just take this water height to 80. And now you can see our water height is quite low. So let's take it to 20. And now you can see our hot water height is quite low to 20. Let's just take it to 50 here. And this is how it is basically looking. So let's just take it to 100 again. Now, if you want, you can also increase your X, Y, and Z direction here. So if I take it to 1000 by 1000, so now you can see we are having this big pool of water and it's pouring basically from our emitter here. So let's just look at some more properties before ending this session here. So if I scroll here, you can see we are having a grid flip second emitter. So if I turn this on here, and if I save it here, now you will see that we are having some foam and some splash into our scene. So if I deactivate and activate it again, so to do that, you need to just select this. You need to scroll downward and here you will find somewhere uh, activate and deactivate. So let me just see here. Okay. Or else what you can do if you don't find that just increase or decrease the maximum cell. So if I take it to 100 or just if I click here, you can see it's restarting again and again. See. Okay. So if I take it to 128, you can see it's restarting again. Okay. So this is how you can restart basically. And you can see we are getting this foam here, this mist and foam both you can see into our scene. Okay. We can increase the resolution also. So let's just take it to 164. And now you can see we are getting some really good ripples and some foam. 
okay you can change the foam size and foam settings also but we are going to look at that in just a bit but before that if you want you can control all the stuff your water height your maximum cell size from here only so if i take my pressure iterations to 300 you can see our quality is really improved so basically it improves the simulation quality it doesn't improve the resolution but improves the simulation quality so you get some realistic results with the help of pressure iterations here and if you want to show the bounds you can click that on and now you can see we are seeing this bounds also so now if i yeah here is your auto activate so i have not scroll downwards here but you can see we are having this auto activate also so you can just turn and turn on and turn off your auto activate and it will play again here and now let's just go again back to our settings so let's just scroll upwards and let's just double click it here now if you want you can change the foam settings also so if i click it here you can see we are getting the foam aging rate and spray rate so if i take it to three and three here now you will see that we are getting a foam and it's basically dissipating fast okay and if i take it to 0.3 by 0.3 here now you can see our foam is lasting really long so if you remember our foam was dying here but now it's set to 0.3 by 0.3 so our foam is basically not dying faster and it's taking some time to die here okay so basically it's a aging rate you can vary it also we are going to see how you can do that in next video but before going i want to show you one more thing that is a opacity multiplier so if i take it to 0.4 now you can see we are getting some opaque results and if you want to basically control your foam size also you can do that with your scale curve here so if i take it to 0.4 now you can see we are getting small foam here so it's really looking good so this is how easy it is to basically change the settings of the foam into your niagara fluids so if you want to import a uh, animation and something like that you need to do some settings for it to work perfectly so let's just do one thing let's just take the scale cow to 0.7 for now and now you can see we are getting this okay and if i import a spear here or a box here so let's just go to shapes and let's just import a cone here let's say this time and if i take it inwards or something like this you can see it's basically not colliding so if you remember we need to add a tag to this so let's just search for tags here and let's just add a tag here a name and name it to collider and now you can see if i move this it will now collide see now you can see it's beautifully colliding with our water here see now if you want basically reduce this collision effect so if i move here you can see it's really going fast and water is really moving fast when i move my object so you can control this also for that you need to again go to your niagara system and if i click on my grid here you will find that setting here which is your collision velocity so if i take it to one and now if i move you can see we are getting this splash and miss but our velocity our collision velocity is now lower so if i take it to 0.3 here and let's just save this here and let's just close this and if i move and now you can see we are getting this result and we are not colliding that much because of our collision velocity here and this is looking really good so if i go full screen and press f11 you can see now this is looking something like this here so if you want to animate it also or take it something like this a shape kind of thing or something like that you can do that also and now you can see we are getting this result here so let's just rotate it a bit more and let's just move it inside so if you want you can do something like this also okay so you can do something like this coming a spaceship coming out of the water or you can do something like this a ship going backward and forward and you are getting some really beautiful effects here so if i take it upwards something like this and now you can see this is how it is looking so in next video we are going to look at how you can import your animated geometry and make it collide with your niagara fluid system 
and how you can generate foam and mist from that object with the help of Niagara system. And we are not going to use this. We are going to use the 3D pool. This is just for your knowledge of how the Niagara fluids work, how the water works. So in next session, we are going to dive into a project. So if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button and share it with your friends who wants to learn Unreal Engine. See you guys next time. Bye bye.